Hi everyone, I'm here with Mike Levitis, owner of TPC Racing. Fortunately, they're not too far from PCA's headquarters, so he's got a special surprise to show us, and we're going to go into the details of this vehicle. Tell me a little bit about what we're going to look at today. Bill, what we're really going to do is we're going to go in-depth and look at the detail of the GT4 car. Um, at first appearance, the GT4 seems very similar to the uh, Cayman S, which its uh, DNA is derived from. But I think as we take a closer look, I think we'll see some similarities way beyond into their GT program. That's going to be awesome. We've seen a lot of great videos from Porsche and other enthusiast sites where the GT4 has been zooming by, people have taken it on the track. But I don't think we've seen any videos where we've gone in depth to look at the details, mechanicals of the vehicle. And I'm holding this lug nut because it starts with the lug nut. This car, as he was taking off the wheel so that we could do some good video shots, he noticed that this particular lug nut is different from your standard Cayman's lug nut. It is, Vu. The, uh, the first observe observation before when we took the wheel off is that they literally changed the fastener uh, that holds the wheel on, the bolt itself. Um, as they say, the, uh, er the, er the devil's in the detail, and uh, I believe that this goes way beyond that. All right, so let's take a look at some of these details on how this GT4, and, and I've, I've had a preview with Mike prior to this interview, and I can tell you it's very impressive how unique the GT4 really is. Okay, so we find ourselves at the front end of the GT4, and I think most of us know the suspension pieces for this vehicle at the front are primarily derived from the GT3. Is that right? That is, Vu. I, I think what we're really looking at, we've had uh, GT3s on the rack, and we've got quite a few even of the race cars here at TPC, and what we're really looking at is the upright from the GT3. You're looking at the lower control arm from the GT3, but yet, if you really get closer inspection you'll see this is a GT4 lower control arm. I believe that the 4 has a slightly different length than the 3 in the lower control arm. It might not be 100% but I believe so. There are some differences between the 3 and the 4. I would have to think that the uh, shock valving is probably similar in the front but there's probably some differences in the uh, shock itself. It features the uh, electronic shock. It's the PASM shock but this is the next generation. This is a fully aluminum body not a steel body. Um, has way less weight, um, so, uh, you know. Reducing, reducing the uns unsprung weight oh, yeah, completely. up front. There's way less mass in there. So speaking of the shocks and the springs, as I look up there, I notice this has a fully adjustable uh, coilover setup. And if I'm not mistaken, the GT4 and the GT3 are the only cars in Porsche's lineup that come factory with the adjustable coilover setup. Is that right? It is. It's, uh, it seems to be that the uh, GT family cars really hold that as a tradition. Uh, they make these as fully adjustable, uh, they're for all intents and purposes, track cars. So they're fully adjustable, uh, both in their ride heights. Uh, don't be mistaken when you're changing the ride height. I don't know if the camera gets the angle, but look at the angle of the lower control arms to the uh, chassis itself. You'll see as the ride height changes, so does the wheelbase. And the car is uh, very unique in that way. And uh, so tuning these cars, uh, one must has a, have to really pay attention to all these geometries. So speaking of tuning, again, we know this is a GT3 derived or primarily parts and pieces from a GT3 suspension. But something that most people would probably overlook when you're looking at this end of the car is this little black piece right here. And tell me the significance of this little piece and what it might mean to a driver or to the car on track. Well, Vu, it's, it's interesting that you point that out. This piece is not on the GT3, not that I have seen. Um, even on our race car GT3s, we don't have a tuning in this area of the car, but this is a spoiler. And by removing the spoiler, you change the front grip into the tires. And so if you were to remove this, you would actually increase the speed underneath of the car and provide more downforce and then you would have to complement that with a little more wing in the back end of the car. Uh, it's, an, it's an interesting car as well also you know just like the GT3 view it does feature the adjustable front sway bars so you can get that track tuning done. Very cool. Well we've seen the front let's move to the back. Okay, we're now at the rear of the GT4, and uh, again, I got a preview of what was underneath, and it is quite impressive of how much has been tailored specifically for this car. In fact, I don't see a whole lot of parts 
that are under this car that matches any other standard Cayman. So, Mike, can you walk us through and just maybe point out some of the highlights of things that really impressed you when you took a first look under this car? You know, Vu, I'd have to agree with you completely. When our first observation was that there were some similarities and some dissimilarities underneath of the car, but on, in further inspection, really, of the GT4, you'll notice that the upright is completely revised. It's got a much sturdier upright. It can handle much more loading because obviously the G-forces that it'll generate will be way higher. And as well, the rear damper is completely revised. It's very similar to the front damper. What it is is it's an inverted upright. So the reason they invert this is because on a standard shock that would be on a Boxster Cayman or any mid-engine car for that reason, any mid-engine Porsche for that reason, would have a traditional shock in that you'd have a body and then you'd have a piston rod coming out of the top of it. Now the thing with that is that the piston rod may only be a 19 to 22 millimeter piston rod. So that will have a certain amount of bend deflection. Because the G-loading is so high on the GT4, or they intended it to be a track car, what they've done is they've inverted the shock as the front one, and now the piston rod is down in the bottom section where it's not under any, any load as far as bending forces, and the forces that are against the guide, which is in the top part of the shock, is a very large, uh, is really the shock absorber body itself. So the the guide to clearance the guide to uh, piston rod clearance there is going to be minimal so that you can load it much much heavier so so this is all in the name of making sure that your suspension is stable under all loads oh totally i mean this this car was designed to uh, be a undergo some really high g loads much higher than the regular car that's the reason that the casting is so beefy um, you'll also notice that if you look at the lower control arm, you'll see a lot of similarities to the front suspension. Look at that. The next thing you'll observe is brake cooling. That is totally unique to this uh, GT4, uh, different than the GT3, totally. The next uh, thing that you'll observe is that the upright, or the frame rail that carries the load from the lower control arm, the load is transmitted into this frame member. This frame member is completely redesigned. That's a total different part. It even has a GT4 uh, part number and insignia on it. The next characteristic that I've noticed, Vu, that uh, I didn't point out to you before, I was kind of, this was something that struck me right away when I looked under the car when we picked it up from the dealer's lot. Right away I was taken by this. But the detail is so, so extreme that not only is the frame section that carries the load from the lower control arm to this frame into the chassis, so the chassis then delivers it, you know, because you've got to put the load into the chassis, but to make the load go from right to left, they've actually put a reinforcing bar behind the sway bar. Oh, Look wow. at this. That is oh. totally, never have seen any manufacturer do something like that, so that the load is transmitted from right to left, so that when you're loading this frame section right here, you're also carrying some load into the other side so that you can distribute more load through the chassis. Uh, now, else? one thing that, that, that's a carryover from, carry from the mid-engine car is this uh, rear frame piece that, it, that goes from the right frame to the left frame, and this carries some load, and then this lower pan also in the past has been the only thing really that connected the two frame rails. But now, if you kind of step forward a little bit, you'll notice that they've got a box steel I-beam that they've put to carry the load from right to left. This is seems to be revised from the standard uh, Cayman S model in the Boxster. Um, this really is a proper GT car at this point. So as we're looking around underneath, I can't help but notice the barcodes and the QR codes. And I see that QR code has a GT4 um, lettering on it. Mike, tell me a little bit about this special barcode. Well, I believe, Vu, that this upright is a completely revised component, specifically for the GT4 car. I believe if you look even closer, you can see that somebody hand-scribed 8-0, which is typically for the performance um, motorsport is typically like 809294. Um, that's their suffix. Now the axle itself is a seems to be a different part number. 
from the Cayman S as well. Uh, probably because the length of the axle may have been changed due to the upright. And I believe that the upright is, it, it had to recall for a different axle at that point. So we talked about, you know, there are many Cayman S owners out there that may have purchased it recently or, or a couple of years ago. Um, and of course, with the introduction of the GT4, they may have some dreams of converting their Cayman S into a GT4. But as we look underneath, there's a whole lot that you would have to purchase to make your Cayman S into a GT4. And whether or not those items would fit is still a story yet to be told. But there is one item on this car that I think you said could be converted over to a Cayman S, and that is the exhaust. Now, again, not considering price, but from what you can tell, uh, what do you think of fitment of something like this onto a standard Cayman S? Vu, I would have to think from just sheer observation, it looks to me like the uh, header itself is in the same location where it terminates to the uh, muffler section. And uh, so it does look like Cayman owners and Boxster owners would be able to put this magnificent sounding exhaust onto their cars. And uh, believe me, this, uh, when we went to pick up the car, we were warned, we were told there was uh, some GT3 RSs and GT3s, and we, we've driven a lot of the GT3s, and we were told that the exhaust system may even sound better than the GT3. Oh, those are some fighting words uh, there. Some <laughs> fighting words there. And I right away was like, ah, that's not even possible. And uh, lo and behold, it does have a very special note. And you can see, actually, Vu, that the, the exhaust system really goes straight through the muffler. So a lot like the GT3 in the way that That's the like Basically goes. a bypass. I mean, yeah, it's a you complete, can go straight yeah, out. Yeah. It really is. It's really a total bypass. Looks like a single resonator in this section here. And then when the valve is in the closed position, which it is now, when it's closed, then it has it's forced through this two-chamber exhaust right here, which does calm it down. The car's got a lovely note to it in Porsche's. Uh, it, it truly defines the car, the note of the exhaust. It truly does. Well, Mike, thank you very much for allowing us to take a peek at uh, your new toy. I know um, this car you'll probably utilize to just kind of take a gander and, and look at how you'll you'll maybe uh, improve Cayman S owners' cars by learning what, what uh, Vysok has done to the GT4. Um, this is, it's really cool to be able to take a, take a look underneath and see the underpinnings um, because I don't believe I've ever seen it anywhere else. Yeah, I have to tell you, Vu, it's, um, it's a really interesting car. It's a great experience just being able to identify where this came from, coming from the race car and myself. It's really, um, it's quite enlightening and quite refreshing to see such an amazing car. This car really is pure to its roots and pure to being a, a true sports car. I believe a lot of these components could be added to uh, a lot of the GT, uh, the GT uh, Caymans or the Cayman S's and they could be partially a GT car, but this car truly is a unique car. There you have it. Look at the position of even the...